How's it going everyone, my name is Real Venom, and welcome to a complete guide on the Ratchet and the Clank Future Tools of Destruction 10 Gold Bolt Speedrun. This guide will cover everything you need to know about the run, such as all the basic tricks you require, where to grab the bolts on a run, and all the planet specific tricks to complete the run. All the timestamps will be in the description if you need to skip to a certain part in the run, such as a certain planet. And if you do like this content, remember to drop a like as it helps out the channel a lot, and let's get started. So just before the tutorial starts, I just want to give a quick background on where the 10 Special Bolts category originated from, and what is the concept of the run as a whole. On the main Ratchet & Clank leaderboards, we have a category known as All Special Bolts. Depending on which game you play, this could be All Gold Bolts, All Platinum Bolts, All Titanium Bolts, or in the case for All for One, All Hero Bolts. The basic premise is completing the game from a fresh game save while collecting all of these Special Bolts. So while having a conversation with the Ratchet & Clank Discord, I discovered that the earliest runs for what we know as 10 Special Bolts originated in around October 2013, where runner Cypress was running against Orc Brian to see how fast they could collect 10 gold bolts in Ratchet & Clank 1. This was the earliest I could see on Speedruns Live, while the earliest I could see on Speedrun.com, the site that we know nowadays, is about two years ago. The earliest run of Ratchet & Clank Tools to Destruction 10 Gold Bolts was actually 6 months ago by the current world record holder, Killer Lombax. In the case of Ratchet & Clank Future Tools of Destruction, there are 32 Gold Bolts to collect in the game, however this category only focuses on collecting the first 10, so timing begins on the first input on Kerr 1 and ends when we collect the final bolt on Ardolis. For this reason, there are a lot of strats that we do differently from the main All Gold Bolts run, such as a different bounce on Mukau and doing the last bounce on our dollars to get to the bolt. For this reason, some strats may be a bit harder than others and may save time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the difficulty in the bottom corner, just so you can see how difficult the strat is. If there's a strat that is easier that you can do, definitely focus on doing that, as I do a lot of the easier strats and I still have a relatively good time on the leaderboards. However, if you do want to push yourself that bit further, you can definitely go for the harder strats and push your time further. The main purpose of the tutorial isn't necessarily to teach you all the world record strats back to back, but mainly to give you a good starting ground to get yourself a 35 minute time or even push that lower. A lot of the world record strats that I use are just consistency with the current strats that are implemented, and that's the main difference with the run. However, there are a couple of different strats which I will get Killer Lombax to display, just in case you want to do those ones. But for the most part, everything else will be covered in the video, so how about we get started with the tutorial, shall we? So as I mentioned earlier, we collect the first 10 accessible bolts in the game. We do this by collecting 1 bolt on Kabalia, 2 bolts on Quartog, 4 bolts on Mukau, 1 bolt on Nundak, and 1 bolt on Ardolis. We also grab 1 bolt on Voron Asteroid Belt, but we don't actually have that listed in our planet list. That's because it's the auto scroll that comes after leaving Fastoon. So after collecting the 6 components of Fastoon to repair Aphelion, we play the Holovite that we received from Stefan Quarkinopolis. Sorry, Walter Quarkowski. Wait, my bad. Finnegan no quarks a lot. But after we play the Holovite, we get an invite to the Imperial Fight Festival on Mukau. Once we leave Fastoon, we realise there is actually an auto scroller in the way, which is Voron Asteroid Belt, where we're fighting off Slag and his pirates. So we have to shoot the bonus targets on that stage to collect the last bolt. But that's just something we do in the run anyway, and I'll explain why when we actually get to that segment of the run. One last thing before I get started with teaching you guys Kerr 1, I just want to teach a little bit of movement tech that we do throughout the entire run, just so I can reference it later on and it makes a bit of sense rather than trying to throw you guys in a deep end when I reach it. And the first thing I do want to teach is wall bounces. So in most of the main series Ratchet & Clank games, whenever Ratchet jumps against the wall, you have the option to do another jump while pressed against the wall, and this will force Ratchet off the wall and jump off, essentially known as a wall jump or a wall bounce. In Tools of Destruction, there's a couple of bounces that we can do where it's a normal wall bounce. However, there's an interesting quirk where if Ratchet bounces off a sloped surface, he will launch with increased speed, and this is known as a glitched wall bounce. Now, we exploit this by using the Shock Ravager, which you can obtain on Cortog, to do what's known as whip jumps. Basically, you aim on the slope surface, you bounce off it, you hold X and start mashing R1. Basically, by holding jump, you'll gain height, as every time you whip, you'll get a grounded state for a moment and be able to whip up again. As long as you keep the stick neutral, as in without any input, you are able to feather your flight when you've released X, so that you can press X and R1 at the same time to essentially get little bursts of height, to basically treat it like Flappy Bird. This can be helpful especially getting under the wall on Cortog, and it can help out on Creely to get a more direct route when trying to get to the end, 
Because we don't actually go to Creely Comet in the run, it's not as important. And there's no spots where we would actually be releasing the X button for this. So for the most part, just knowing that holding X while you're flying and mashing R1 or the fire button is the way that we achieve flight with this. The other piece of movement tech I want to teach has to do with using a Felion once you've repaired her on Fastoon and it's utilized throughout the run and it's known as a ship bounce. Basically when you high jump, it kind of puts you into a neutral state so that it's kind of weird when you actually do a high jump. What we can do with this is we can stand on either the wing or the nose of a Felion and when we're looking in direction, by doing a high jump straight off it, we can get immense speed. This is utilized especially in any percent on Sargasso but for the most part, in the run, we use it on Mukal twice, and we use it on Nundak once, just to grab the bolts that we need. It is a really cool strat to see in any percent. I do recommend, if you do get some time, watch an any percent run, just to see some of the cool movement tech we do. But for the most part, this trick revolves around using Aphelion to go to some certain locations in the levels, and you'll see that when we get into the main tutorial. And now that you know the basics of movement tech within this game, let's actually get started with learning some of the planets and take a look at Kerwan. As this is a 10 gold bolt run, I'm going to assume that you've already got your saves set up, with lock strafe mode as your camera, with 6 axis controls off, and that you've used PS3 hand to remove the cutscenes we're allowed to remove. If not, I go and recommend doing so. I will be leaving a link in the description to go and grab PS3 Hen to remove the cutscenes. And I will be also linking what cutscenes you were able to delete as per our rules. And the main reason we are allowed to delete the cutscenes is because the JP PS3 or the Japanese PS3 can actually skip the early cutscenes, meaning you don't have to waste two minutes at the start watching a cutscene for a, such an early reset point. So that's why at the start you're going to be seeing a black screen for about 10 seconds before I start the run. And as soon as the run starts, I'm going to be doing two long jumps and pausing, navigating down to my gadgets, pressing right once to grab the thruster pack, and pressing start again. What this is doing is switching me over to the thruster pack, which is going to be the main movement tech for the run. The thruster pack is a lot faster than the heli pack, and the time save is immeasurable. Most of this movement is just going to be long jumps, as in this game we don't have lag jumps or similar movement tech that you'll find in the OG trilogy. So you're going to be seeing Ratchet long jumping everywhere, as opposed to doing stuff like side flips and other weird tech. As we reach the second jump pad, you're going to be seeing me pause, go back to the gadgets menu and equip the helipack. We're going to be needing it for a trick in a moment, and straight after this you're going to see me land and throw two bombs to kill the four enemies in front of me. This clears the way for one of the, I'll call it, difficult tricks in a run. What I'm going to be teaching you is the curl one out of bounds. In order to perform this out of bounds, first thing I'm going to do is to jump up on the box stack of two boxes right in front of the jump pad. As you land, you'll notice the box stack. Do not blow this up, otherwise you pretty much have to reset. I'm going to jump up on there. I'm going to high jump up where the light is, and I'm going to hyper strike on the light. There is an invisible box around the light that makes it so we can actually stand up there. And after I do that, I'm going to double jump up into the corners of the building and keep spamming jump into the corner. The main reason for this is that it's the only way to force yourself through and it can have vastly different results. You could end up clipping through first time. You could take a couple of moments to clip through. It could send you flying backwards and so on. Once you clip through, you'll be able to stand on the wall on the inside. Basically, imagine where the wall is, there's like a thin box around it. You're able to stand on that box and walk around. And once you get there, walk until you're at the end where the sloped wall is. And you're going to do another high jump around it, so you're landing on the inside wall past the sloped surface. There is actually an invisible wall there, so you can't just walk straight in. And I know some people prefer to do the double jump. I do the high jump just for that bit of safety. Because if you lose it at this point, potentially you could lose the run entirely. Once you've reached the other side, you do a high jump going slightly to the left so you don't hit the invisible wall right in front of you. And you're trying to grab where the gate meets the wall. And you'll notice that you'll get a ledge grab there. After you grab the ledge, you go to the pause menu, switch over to the thruster pack. And as soon as you land, do a high jump and then a hyper strike to get up. Congratulations, you've reached out of bounds, and it's simply a walk to the end. As you'll notice in the run, I actually do a long jump across the gap, but you can walk all the way around with no dramas. And as soon as you walked to where the grind rail segment is, you're going to walk almost to the end, but not quite to the end. If you walk to the end, you'll actually hit the death barrier and kill yourself instantly. But what you do is just before the end, 
you do a high jump and a ledge grab, and you'll be on a platform where you're able to long jump across to the rails. Keep in mind, you can still miss the rails and still end up dying, but for the most part, as long as you long jump straight into the rails, you're going to you're gonna end up grinding on one of them, and that will allow you to go to the end of the level. This takes about a minute 30 to complete on average, but don't stress too much if it takes you about two minutes to do. I know that I keep resetting on uh, Curl 1 because I keep losing my runs to it. If you're worried about potentially falling out of bounds, what you can do is actually walk to the grind rail at the start, and act, uh, before hopping on the grind rail, you'll notice that you'll get the save icon, and that just means you've got that checkpoint. So if you do end up dying, you can walk back to the boxes. If the boxes are destroyed, you have no way of getting up, and you have to reset the run. This is why this is one of the most annoying tricks in the game. Once you've gotten through Curve 1, you've got a couple of easy plants so you can rest up. Now for Kabalia. Kabalia is probably one of my favorite planets in the run, and straight out of the gate you're going to be able to walk around as soon as you notice the white screen change from one shade of white essentially to another shade of white. You've got to notice the flicker between the two, and while this second white screen is up, you can actually walk around and so on. So you are able to walk forward and progress yourself through the level further than you normally could, but let's just assume that you don't want to and you could just stand in place. You're not going to lose too much time, but it is still highly recommended you try and walk forward regardless, even if you die. A lot of these centipedes can be blown up with one wrench swing and one bomb. So you're going to be seeing me throw a bomb and a wrench swing, and once again using the thrust pack to navigate everywhere. The first bit of different movement tech you're going to be seeing me do is just an extra wall bounce that saves a couple of seconds. You'll notice there's a box stack at the entrance to this, like, doorway where you got the wall jumps up what you're going to do is you're actually going to jump on the box stack do a single jump and then wall bounce off the archway on the opposite side what that will do is it'll actually launch you on top of the wall bounce area saving a couple of seconds while it's not a drastic save you can actually do it if you want to save that little bit of time otherwise just wall jump up you're not going to be losing too much time as it is the next thing to mention is as soon as I reach the second wall jump area you're going to be seeing me pulling out the bomb and blowing up all the crates in this room we only have one bolt requirement in the run, and that's going to be the Shard Reaper at 35,000 bolts, and you get this on Mukau. So through the run, we're trying to get up to 35,000, but not over bolt ourselves. And so you'll see during the run certain spots where I'm going to be getting extra bolts, which I'll explain on a certain planet. But for the most part, these are a good, a good bunch of bolts to get early on, basically. So I'm going to be blowing these up using the times 2 bolt multiplier that's sitting right at the top of the wall bounce area. And then as soon as I do that, you're going to see me kill the, uh, I'll call them the crawlers, I don't remember their actual name, but basically killing the crawlers, and as soon as the wall opens, going past, breaking the ammo crates to my left to make sure I've got full ammo, and then long jumping into the arena. As I'm falling, I throw a bomb just before the cutscene starts so that I can blow up the box on the opposite side. The boxes in this fight actually work on a timer of about 10 seconds, so what I do is I throw the bomb early to activate that timer, as the cutscene plays, there's a little bit of a pause, but then it starts a timer again. So it means that I'm able to get the bomb ammo faster because the bomb is going to be the way that we're going to be fighting the Leviathan. The Leviathan fight is pretty simple. Just throw some bombs, walk around and break crates. And once you've done that, you'll be able to do a double long jump across and make your way into the factory. The reason I say Kabalia is one of my favorite planets in the run is specifically for the factory. We are able to clip out of bounds using the gel that we're going to be getting with the gelinator. So as soon as you get into the factory and get the gel, you go to the corner that I am looking at. Basically, it's the left corner. And you're going to throw a double stack. You're going to jump and throw a two stack on the edge above it. What's going to happen is, uh, to quote Torpedo, we're going to make a ratchet sandwich. By putting ratchet in between the two blocks, the game tries to force ratchet out with the way it knows how by pushing him out. Because we're trying to push ourselves into the corner, what's going to happen is it's going to push Ratchet through the wall, making us go out of bounds. Once you're out of bounds, you need to stand on the tank's edge and look at the spot I'm looking at. Basically, it's on the pipe in front of you, and you want to throw a two stack on there, jump up and glide around. As you glide around the wall, you're going to be noticing a black bar beneath you. Standing on that black bar is where you need to stand. You walk to the end edge where you can see the uh, goo in front of you, and you just long jump across. If you fall into the goo, that is okay, because you'll respawn at the second checkpoint, which is intentional. If you fall and miss, you're going to end up in the wrong goo, and you'll have to do it all over again. But basically, as long as you've done the correct goo, you're going to respawn instead of completely dying, and when you respawn, you're going to be at the second section, skipping the first part of it. 
Basically for this trick, we're going to be doing a three stack and jumping up the waterfall. So what I'm going to actually do is throw a two stack and as I'm shooting the third, I'm going to jump on the gel cube and jump up. The reason I don't jump on it later is because it can slide off and it is on a slow timer to slide off. So as soon as I land on the cube, I jump up and hyper strike, giving me just enough height to clear up the waterfall. I space out my jumps and make sure I'm landing on the platform above and that actually skips the second part of the puzzle. If you do want to go around the outside, it is about 20 seconds slower, but you can do it if you're not too confident with the waterfall. The waterfall strat is easy enough once you get the mastery of it, and getting to the end is pretty easy. You just throw a couple of gel cubes up and go to the bolt crank. After you do the bolt crank, you can long jump or double jump down so you're standing on the wall where the slanted bit is. It is actually an, like an invisible floor so you are able to stand there. Throw a two stack up and land under it as you can see here, and push yourself to the left and it will push you out of bounds. You want to try and do a long jump or a double jump so that you're getting close to the tanks that are on the outside. You'll see the spot where I land. If you go too far out, the wall will push you out and you have to you know, walk around. But as long as you do it just right, you should be able to long jump onto the silver edge. And this is the first difference between any percent and 10 gold bolts. Instead of going straight to the smuggler, we're going to drop down on the ledge but directly beneath us and grab our first of 10 gold bolts. After this, you're going to do a long jump straight over to the smuggler instead of just dropping down, as dropping down will activate the gadget vendor's cutscene, which will lose you a bit of time. So by doing this, you're going to go straight to the smuggler. You're going to ask what leviathans are and grab the bolts to help obviously towards the 35,000 total. You're going to get him to give you a ride and then say, let's go. And that is the end of Kabalia. Now we're moving on to Kortog, and even before we've gotten into the level, we're going to be doing a trick. As you see the planet appear on the screen, hold L2 and down on the stick, and just keep holding it until the cutscene plays. There is a very good reason for this, and the main reason is we're just going to skip the missiles. Missiles are a joke, why would, why would we want to do the missiles? I mean, come on guys. So by doing this, we're going to skip the missiles, and as soon as the cutscene plays, you can release them and press start to skip the cutscene, and congratulations, you've skipped the missile falling section. As soon as you do this, you can do a long jump and go to the vendor to make sure you've bought ammo because you're going to be needing some bombs coming up. And then you just want to do some long jumps heading up towards the cyclo cannon. Once you get to the cyclo cannon, it's going to take five bombs to kill it. So throw your bombs, kill the thing, win-win, and go forward to grab your favorite weapon in your arsenal, the Shock Ravager. The Shock Ravager, as mentioned earlier, is the main form of boomer tech that we're going to be using in the run, so it's good to grab it now. Killing all the enemies in the area will also give you a lot of bolts, so I did forget to mention, but grab the jackpot crate at the start just so you can get a bit of extra bolts and rare titanium. And you want to be destroying all the boxes in the area, including the uh, rare titanium chest that you see in the area. Once all the enemies are dead and once the crates have been collected, you're going to be doing a glitched wall bounce as mentioned earlier, but this one is very precise, so I'm going to give a pause just so I can circle the area on screen. You're trying to aim at this light, and you're trying to aim to bounce upward, preferably with a bit of speed. Because what we're going to be doing is going to the first bolt, as opposed to doing the any percent strat and getting straight to the end. Once you've got this wall bounce, it did actually take me about two or three tries to do this, but once you get the wall bounce, you want to whip until you have 12 left, and then glide down onto the wall. You can do it with 13, but for the most part, 12 will be just enough to do it. After that, just do a long jump off there and tap your glide by just tapping X very slowly, and grab your first bolt on Kortog. This indicates bolt two for the run. And then walk straight backwards and jump on the railing and then double jump up onto the ledge to your right. You then wanna do a circle strafe jump to do a glitch wall bounce on that and whip up as high as possible, but keeping a distance so you can actually hyper strike down onto the, I'll call it the honeycomb pattern that's on the uh, roof below. What we're going to be doing is attempting a proxy by hyper striking onto it. There are certain surfaces in the game where the game doesn't really like you trying to walk on them for some weird reason or jump on them. So what we're going to be doing is hyper striking and sliding for a bit. And if we get close enough to the edge while we're sliding off, we're going to get immense speed and be able to launch ourselves straight into the second room. And this is where the second bolt is. And this is also where the end of the level is. After this, you should have one or two whips left. If not, you're going to have to do the uh, 
bolt crank and you're going to have to go up normally. But assuming you have one or two whips left, what you can do is stand on this sonar thing, look at the ladder and do a long jump and then end with a whip. This will give you just enough distance to grab onto the ladder. You can then climb up and climb into the vent. Before falling down and fighting the enemies in the area, I recommend doing a long jump across and breaking the rare titanium chest just to get a little bit of extra rare titanium for later. And then doing a long jump backwards and hyper striking to fall into the area. Combat here is pretty simple. The flying enemies in the back take two bombs and the enemies in front usually take about one or two whips. Two is usually what you end up doing, but sometimes you can get a nanotech upgrade in this area, which actually allows you to kill more enemies. But basically, you just kill the enemies in the area, and just before the cutscene starts, walk backwards to the ammo crate behind you and grab the ammo. The main reason for this is just, you're going to be needing the ammo, you might as well grab it, it's free. And congratulations, you've beaten Cortog. As we load into Fastoon, we're going to have a black screen similar to the one that we had on Kabalia, where it's a white screen. And what we're going to do is we're trying to get as close to the vendor as possible so that when we can actually see, we're going to be using the vendor, buying ammo, and then doing a skip up to an edge to get the first component. If you aren't aware, you need to get six components on this level to move on. And the first one is going to be on a ledge that normally you'd have to swing shot across the gap to reach and do all this climbing. But what we're going to do is we're going to stand on this rock here and we're going to be doing a high jump and landing on the lamppost. Once you've stored on the lamppost, I highly recommend switching back to the helipack, doing a high jump and either whipping or hyper striking at the end to get up on top. If you break the light post, I'm sorry, but you've got to go walk around, but it won't be too much time loss anyway. Once you climb up, I do recommend switching back to the thruster pack and just moving towards the component. Whipping a couple of crates along the way, remembering of course you have to get 35,000, but don't whip too many. You don't need to whip that many as it is. Once we've grabbed the first component, we're going to be using the zip line down to the ship and pressing start as soon as the cutscene starts to skip the cutscene. And we're going to go grab our next component. We're going to actually go over to this tower here, double jump up, double jump to the second tier. And instead of walking all the way around, we're actually going to turn around and do a double jump and a whip to skip up to the third part and basically the fourth. It is a small optimization and if you aren't comfortable with it, just go the long way. It's not, it's not too much time, it's like two or three seconds. Now once we grab the second component, we're going to be doing a long jump to the third. As you can see, it's at the end of the magnet boot section, which is our back alley. What we're going to do on the way as well, as you notice, there are small red enemies that can die with one whip. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to whip two groups of them to activate the spawners and then I'm going to hyper shot to the next area. What this is going to do is while I'm going to grab the fourth of the components, it's going to spawn some extra enemies so that when I come back, I could just kill a bunch of enemies and get some bolts. I'm going to kill the enemies here to open the door. And as I'm killing the enemies in the door, you're going to notice me pause. What this will do is actually skip the upgrade animation to get the Shock Ravager V2. If you don't skip it, it's about five seconds. Once again, not too much time loss, but it, it can be considered if you're going to push your time low. Once you've gotten the fourth component, you're just going to backtrack to where you had the clank section. So you're just going to kill a couple of things along the way and collecting bolts. Before the clank section, I aim to have at least 25,000 bolts. The main place to collect this is from the enemies you spawn by whipping on the way past. And near the clank section, you're going to be noticing a couple of barriers. You can break them and they do have a chance of dropping up to 3,000 bolts. This can be really handy and sometimes I get the 3,000 and I get a lot of bolts and end up sitting on way more bolts than I need. You're not going to be losing too much time if you're over bolted, but it does help to be as close to the 25 as possible so you're not pushing too far. Now once we load into the clank section, we're going to be doing a trick known as GGS or glitched glide state. While I'm not going to cover it completely in this tutorial, I do actually recommend the video that Torpedo posted on the basics on GGS. This is the same trick we use in any percent for Fastoon and Creely, so definitely go and watch that. He is a god tier runner and I do recommend watching the video to get an understanding of this trick. But the basics of it is we're going to be activating time slow as we glide into a sloped surface on the rock. And what this will do is allow us to actually glide up the wall next to us. You're going to see it on screen and basically just watch the tutorial. It's going to teach you everything you need. I do actually give this trick a 4 out of 5. It is basically impossible if you don't know. And for the longest time, I used to just go around the long way. But as soon as you learn GGS and learn the trick to do GGS, you're totally okay. Definitely go and watch the video. I'm going to be linking in the description and have the card up the top just so you can go and watch that. Once you've done GGS, walk to the door to activate the cutscene, get your fifth component, and then leave the clank section. 
The last opponent is in a swimming area, but what we're going to do is just before we enter, we're going to be taking some damage. The main reason for this is once we grab the last component, we want to get out of there as fast as possible. And the fastest way to do it is die. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to put myself on 5 health here. You can put it on 6, you can put it on 3, but basically you want to take yourself to 1 or 2 hits. And then you're going to swim through the area taking no damage. Once you grab the component, you're going to deliberately swirl them into the mines that are in the water and die. What it's going to do is spawn you back at the escape pod. And what that's going to do is allow you to just cross the gap quickly and get back to Aphelion as fast as possible. Once you get to Aphelion, it's going to have a cutscene where you're repairing her, obviously skip that, and then navigate to the bottom where it says, can you play this Holovite I've received? Uh, Aphelion will say something along the lines, I've got a HD 40 you know, player, and then you scroll to the bottom and it will say enter ship. Don't press start too early as you will pause instead of skipping the cutscene, but then skip the three cutscenes and make your way to Mukau. Except it's not Mokau, it's Voron Asteroid Belt. Voron Asteroid Belt is probably the most simple planet in the run as it is just an auto-scroller. However, you're going to be needing to shoot 5 bonus targets in order to get the gold bolt. Now earlier I mentioned that we had to shoot it and we do it in the run anyway. And that's because in any percent there's actually a dialogue that if you don't shoot the 5 targets it will say x out of 5 bonus targets destroyed and that takes another 5 seconds. In order to speed this up we actually shoot the bonus targets all 15 in the run and this saves 15 seconds total. Just, it's a 3 gold bolt run to be honest really. So you're going to be aiming to kill as much as possible and you don't really need to shoot the turrets on the big destroyers however it's just good fun to get rid of them. And you're going to be trying to shoot as much as possible including the raritanium pyramids I suppose you'd call them. And you're going to be trying to just shoot everything. As you notice, you'll see me shooting and then occasionally shooting a missile. What I'm doing is I'm spamming R1. And this just allows me to shoot an extra missile. You're going to be seeing this when we go into the boss fight at the end of this uh, run. Now, what you're going to see me do is charge up my missiles after shooting the fifth bonus target for the boss fight with Poopy Pants Wallace. Sorry, Puffy Pants Wallace. This boss is a real pain as there are three different attacks that he can have and you only get the third attack after his second or third phase. At the start of the fight he's going to laugh and as soon as he starts laughing I'm going to release my burst of missiles so that when he stops laughing he can get hit with them. There are three different attacks he can do in this. He can do the one with the buzz blade where he brings it across the screen at whatever height he has when you start. So say you're at the bottom of the screen, at the start of his thing he will put it at the bottom of the screen so you can fly up and avoid it. The second one is he's going to be launching missiles, and these can literally blow up your missiles as well, so it's useful to just try and strafe around them, especially while you're spamming missiles. And the third one, and the most important one, is the light beam. Once the light beam is finished, he will open his eye and reveal his weak point, and that's the RNG cycle you want. If you don't have that RNG cycle, it's going to take you a little bit longer, but it should take you roughly 5 minutes. If it's taking longer, it means you're not firing enough missiles, so you need to be spamming L1 more. I believe I said R1 earlier, but I did mean L1. R1 you need to be holding while you're firing, L1 is the one that you spam for missiles. But once you've killed the boss, you're going to be able to move on to Mukau, and this is definitely the longest planet in the run. So Mukau is where we're going to be the first variants and strats. There are two ways that you can go to grab the first and second bolts, and I'm going to be showing you both. They're both the same difficulty at 1 out of 5, but one of them grabs the charge boots that you can use throughout the run, and the other one skips them. The main reason I'm offering both options is that the charge boots aren't actually needed for the run, they're just nice to have. The first one is going to be the ship bounce on the wing. As I mentioned with ship bounces earlier, you need to stay on the wing. Before hopping onto the ship, if you equip the combustor, then the shock ravager, and put on the helipack, what you can do is then press triangle and activate the combustor, and you can use that for aiming. So you're going to stand on the wing on the blasters, aim at about this point on the rock, and high jump. Once you get close to it, press triangle and then R1, and it will allow you to whip up. You can then high jump up and whip, and it will allow you to get on top. Basically, navigate your way to the charge boots, and then you'll be able to go to the next area. Now the other strat that I actually prefer to do is slightly faster to get to the bolt, but it doesn't grab the charge boots, and that's the one that you're going to be seeing in most of my runs. What you're going to do is you're going to head to the front archway and head around to the left where you've got some rocks. You're going to stand on this lower rock and your goal is to jump around so you're wall bouncing off the left hand rock. 
Once you do this, you're gonna get enough height with seven whips to get onto the edge above. And you're just gonna use the thruster pack to navigate back to the first bolt. I recommend actually using the whip on the chest and then walking into the bolt as during the cutscene, you can actually collect the rare titanium. After this, the route becomes the same. We're going to go over to the rock nearby going to jump up onto the rock and then do a wall bounce off the rock to get a bit of flight. You're going to be whipping for about, let's say, 10 or to 12 whips. Basically, you want to try and get as close to the tree at the back of this map as possible, because what we're going to do is we're actually going to strafe around the back wall to get one of the bolts. By pressing forward after doing your whips, you're able to get this momentum. By turning your camera, you're able to hold this momentum. And you're just going to glide over this wall and land on this silver silver platform behind the wall. You're going to jump and glide down until you glide through the wall and you're going to grab the bolt. Now at this point you might be like, but Venom, you're stuck. How are we going to escape? We're going to save quit. And this is where I'd be able to show you the chest death abuse. Basically by gliding in between the chest, it wedges Ratchet in such a spot that if you don't touch the analog stick, the game goes, well, he's flying for ages. He must be stuck. And it's a soft lock prevention me mechanism where it kills you and sets you back to your spawn point. The spawn point being at the start of the level next to the ship. We're going to be doing another ship bounce here, this time on the opposite wing. Once again, equip your shock ravager, equip your combustor, and then equip your helipack. You're going to aim, and then very quickly, after your second part of the high jump, you're going to switch the whip and whip up, and this will allow you to grab the third bolt. You're then going to do a long jump and navigate over to this rock where we're going to be doing a weird jump called the arch jump. So you're going to be standing on this low rock. You're going to be doing a high jump and towards the end where you've got the archway above you, you're going to be doing a whip, grabbing and then jumping immediately to land on top of the arch. Once you're on top of the arch, you can do a double jump and a whip or a high jump and a whip. But basically, you're going to make your way over to the bridge and grab your fourth bolt. Now at this point, we've got all the bolts on the planet, so we may as well go to the arena. So you're going to jump off the bridge and land on that rock that you were just on to grab onto the arch. You're going to aim to jump around to the side of the rock where I am going here. And you're going to do seven or eight whips up to the arena and then make your way to the vendor. The first thing we're going to do in the vendor is going to grab the Shard Reaper. The Shard Reaper is the weapon that we're going to be using for the arena and for killing Crushdo. After this, instead of quitting out of the vendor, you're going to go to the upgrades, you're going to go to the Shard Reaper, and you're going to go and grab the damage, the first speed, and the damage. You can go as far as I've done here and grab the extra ammo and the damage. I just do that all the time just because it gives me that extra bit of wiggle room, but for the most part, you only need the first ones. After you've grabbed this, you can go to the arena and start your fight. Optimizing the arena is kind of easy for the fact that they will spawn where you're looking. So as long as you're looking at the same one or two doors, the enemies won't be running around the arena as much. And just walk around and shoot things. That's all this fight is. Just the electric enemies can take uh, two or three, depending on the distance. And most of the other enemies take one. So just shoot things, have fun in the arena. And that's really all there is to this. Crush though is a weird fight though. Crush though basically you can do poking, which is a strat that's in Ratchet and Clank 2. Um, it's a way to essentially make bullets in the game do double damage by going through the hitbox twice. And you can do a similar sort of strat here with Crushto, where if you're standing at a certain distance, I find that the ring around where Crushto is is roughly the distance. You're able to do double damage to him as per normal. So it allows you to kill him in less shots than normal. Once he does the suck in, hold back and keep yourself at about that distance. If he eats you, you're dead. He's then going to do some more missile firing and potentially blow you out of the arena. Remember to just combat that and keep shooting him and eventually you'll be able to beat him and get the cutscene. After three start presses and a circle, you'll be in the area where you have the helipods. Just press triangle, navigate to your helipod, do a long jump and throw a helipod out to open the door. You're then going to do a long jump and a hyperstrike to get on top of the elevator and then throw your helipods again. Then after you leave the teleporter, you're just going to keep long jumping to the ship going to skip some cutscenes and move on to Nundak Asteroid Ring. Now Nundak is another really annoying planet. It's not one of my favourites in the run and this is specifically for the bounce we're going to be doing after we grab the bolt. So the first thing we're going to be doing is as soon as we land we're going to walk forward and activate the cutscene with the smuggler. Basically, we need to get some Leviathan souls to get to the space station, and that's a whole lot of garbage. We're just going to, you know, glitch past it. 
What we're going to be doing is walking back to the ship with the same setup we used for our ship bouncers, being the combustor, the shock ravager, and the helipack. We're going to be standing on the left wing blasters as far onto the blasters as we can to try and get the most speed. And we're going to be doing a high jump and five whips. The reason we do five whips is it gives us just enough distance to drop down onto the gold bolt platform. You're going to be landing on this platform by just adjusting yourself in the air. Once you land and grab the bolt, you're just going to jump off the edge and death abuse essentially. You don't need to be anywhere else with there and that's just the fastest way to get back to the ship. Now comes the worst wall bounce in the game. What we're going to be doing is trying to bounce on this rock at a certain spot which is a couple of pixels wide to get a bounce up to the ship. You know it by getting a really high bounce vertically and once you've got the high bounce you could do between 23 and 26 whips. I usually sit at about 24 to 25 just to make sure I'm high enough. But once we do that, you'll be able to glide over to the space station and stand on this outer panel. After that, you're going to be doing a long jump onto the main platform of the turret. And then from there, you're going to be doing a long jump onto the outer rim. After this, you're going to be long jumping across the gap and trying to stand on a relatively thin ledge on the outside of the space station. And you're going to actually long jump or charge in, depending on if you have to charge boots or not. Now this is where the skips very much differ. What you're going to be doing is after you swim down, you're going to swim down under the pipe. If you clip through the pipe, you'll be inbounds and that will ruin one of the skips. You're going to go under the pipe. You're going to go up past the rock, as you see here. Three jumps and you're going to be standing out of bounds. I've gotten Torpedo here to show the skip that he uses. And this skip allows you to skip straight to the cutscene. It takes about 30 seconds as opposed to the strat that I prefer. I'd say it's about 3 out of 5 difficulty. Once you know the strat, it's not too hard, but you can still drop it even if you're an experienced runner. The strat that I use is actually going inbounds by jumping up on the rocks just here. And this will allow me to do a long jump across the gap where the lasers are to activate the cutscene. This is about 2 out of 5 difficulty, but the success rate's kind of low, so if even if you miss it, you can just go around and shoot the things. Yes, it'll take a little bit longer, but it'll give you that security of you've actually kill the stuff and make sure you can activate the cutscene and once you activate the uh, checkpoint at the door you'll be able to respawn there if you die and it makes life easy instead of having to reset at the ship. Either way once you've gotten into the room whether it be doing the puzzle that you see with a geo laser or clipping out of bounds and going in you'll be able to use the teleporter and go to the ship for the final planet in the run Ardolus. <laughs> The last planet in the run, Ardolus, is very simple and we're not actually going to get to the end of this planet, so the move for tech here is very minimal. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go forward, but not quite forward enough to activate the cutscene. You'll notice where I actually stop walking forward and go to the right where I'm going to be standing on a rock. You're going to be doing a high jump onto the rock above you, as you see here, and you're aiming to wall bounce on this little triangle here. You can see the outline here, I'm actually going to highlight in red as you can see. You're trying to do one jump and land in there for a wall bounce. You're then going to do five whips and glide down to the bolt. There is an invisible wall and that's why you actually have to hit the triangle. But once you've got the knack down, you'll see where it is and you'll be able to do it fine. Once you've glided down to the bolt, you can press time as soon as you start seeing the cutscene for grabbing the bolt. And congratulations, you've gotten all 10 of the bolts. Maybe. You better check it. Go into the menu and look at your items just to confirm you have them. If you know you've gotten all 10, even better. But just for safety, I always make sure. You never know, you might end up doing a run one day and forget one, and it could invalidate your run. And that's it. That's the entire run. There's not much really to say in the way of Moon Protect for the run, as it is rather minimal. However, hopefully this guide has taught you everything you need to know about this run. If you do have any further questions, please come and ask us in the Ratchet and Clank Discord. We do actually have a link that's posted down in the description if you do want to come and join us. We can answer any questions you may have about the run, but hopefully this will explain everything that you need to know about the run. Remember, if you do like this guide, remember to drop a like, and thank you everyone for watching. Peace out.